Hello, my beautiful Sagittarius. Welcome back to Queen Cup Tarot. Just shuffling and whatnot, getting ready to do your April 2019 tarot readings. Now, I did not get to you guys in March. Um, Mercury retrograde kicked my ass, but um, that's why I'm starting with you guys getting your uh, April readings out, really your end of you know, winter, beginning of spring readings, really, just as, you know, time in tarot is very fluid. So, yeah, that's why I'm getting you guys out first, so thank you for your patience. Um, for those that are new, welcome. Please like, share, subscribe. Uh, for those that are returning, thank you so much for your support, um, your healing energy, your positive energy, your emails, your notes, you know, hailing me up, all my Torontonians, you know, that hailed me up, um, you know, all the friends I've made abroad because of this, you know, uh, shout out to Cole, shout out Abril, those are my homies right there, um, so yeah, it's it's been fantastic, so thank you guys, um, I'm gonna do a couple of shout outs as promised, um, but guys, you really have to take it with a grain of salt because that's why I didn't do the readings, it's like, I might change my mind, <laughs> so, take it with a grain of salt, all right? Um, I watch tarot personally, so why not shout out the people I've been watching or resonating with? Maybe they'll resonate with you too, you know? Um, so, yeah, I've been um, Saltwater Heals Tarot. She's hilarious for the dailies. Um, that's for me right there as well. Shout out to Missy. Um, always showing support as well. But, yeah, she has really good dailies. Mana, M-A-N-N-A. She has really good weeklies. She doesn't even use tarot, which I thought was really cool. Um, she's just like a straight empath. So yeah, she's another one. Walu Children Readings. Um, I don't know. I just found that one. I don't even know if I'm saying it right. That was a really good one too. Um, Water Baby Tarot. She channeled a whole spirit guide. Like, described him. Anyways, I was a fan ever since. So yeah, she's dope. Super empathic. So yeah, those are the ones I've been watching and resonating for the past week or couple weeks or whatever. Um, so yeah, check them out. I um, also want to shout out um, Prots Anna from Bloom From Within Project. Um, she does twin flame readings as well. I'm going to put as many details in the description as I can. Um, and uh, and then, yes, I want to shout out Yasmin, who is going to be my supplier. Somebody timestamp this, please. Um, who's going to be my supplier for my frankincense and myrrh for my um, smudge starter kits. Um, I made a post about it. Thank you for everyone who showed love and gave me their feedback and, and showed interest in them. I'm just going to find, I just have to find a way to get them to you logistically and all that good stuff. And I'll totally give you the details and let you know when I'm ready to ship them out. Um, but yeah, she's going to supply the frankincense. I'm going to include her information for those that want to buy it in bulk. Because I'm only going to be selling the, the these kits. Um, and you can get them from her directly. She is fantastic. She is out in Toronto as well with me. Um, so yeah, reach out to her. She has like a whole thing set up. So yeah, those are my shout outs and I think we're, and I smoke pot. It isn't the nature of this. Okay. Um, so feel free to smoke with me. Um, if not, not to worry about it. All right, guys, father, God, ancestors, guardian angels. Thank you for your unconditional love and guidance. Thank you for connecting me with the collective. Right now in particular, thank you for connecting me with the collective of Sagittarius. I ask you to allow me to communicate to them the messages that are in their greatest good surrounding their material abundance, the sustenance, the relationships closest to them, their personal ascension and development, and any other messages you deem worthy at this time. Thank you, Father God, Holy Spirit, ancestors, for everything you do for us every day. We are absolutely nothing without you. Amen. All right, guys. I'm ready to go. Um, hmm. Let's just see. These are your, this is your spread going into the month of April and then going into that. From now until the end of April, your overall energy, oh, holy shit, it's the fool. This could literally be referring to people, some of my viewers might have a child that looks about this cooked inside them. Congratulations. 
you know, um, you can do it, push. <laughs> um, some, some people might have been welcoming a child. Some people might have found out that they're pregnant. This is the um, New Era Elements tarot deck that I'm obsessed with. I love the depictions um, on it. It's the most beautiful deck I've ever seen. Anyways, to date at least. Um, but yeah, this could just be, the, but the fool ultimately is starting from zero, brand new beginning, um, conceiving of new ideas and taking the, the leap of faith required to really get them going or really accept them or to really see um, if everything that is instinctually coming to you about how you know, uh, abundant or how uh, emotionally gratifying a new beginning is, it's like taking that leap of faith to actually get it, you know? Because it's like being pregnant, but not knowing if it's a boy or a girl. It's like, you know, you're going to have a new beginning, but you don't know the details. You're just excited nonetheless. Either way, fantastic overall energy to have going into spring. All right, the first card out. Okay, so take this overall energy out now, because this is just overall. The, 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 the first three cards I lay are going to be the energies closest to you right now. And then it kind of breaks out, right? Uh, just the way I do these readings for you guys, okay? So the energy, the first card out is the seven of, this is the seven of earth. In this deck, it's depicted as failure, okay? And it's, it's one of the harsher cards in the deck. Now, keep in mind, the, the seven of pentacles is waiting um, in reverse. It could be failure, meaning your crops aren't reaping anything. You've got to cut your losses and move on. You know, it's like, it's like the interpretation of failure, perhaps, you know, reflecting. Some of you might have spent Mercury retrograde reflecting on something that you felt or multiple things you felt resonated as a failure to you in your life wondering how you got there, maybe wondering how to resolve it, maybe wondering how to start anew in something that you once tried and failed at, right? It's very Mercury retrograde energy, but let's see. Second card out, Sun of Earth, that is the Knight of Pentacles, okay? Um, this here is... succumbing that just because you surpass certain things doesn't mean you don't have a fear of them or recollection of them um certain like bruising from them maybe say bruising of the ego things like that it's like some of you might have experienced something that really humbled you or stabilized you um but you viewed it as a negative but the cards are showing me it was actually a positive thing that had to bring you to the stable place that you might be feeling or might not be aware that you're at sometimes it's really important to take um proper um look at yourself to see how stable you are sometimes we focus on the negative it's very much part of our culture as well to focus on the negative as aspects um but it seems here i don't know let's just let's just see conflict the five of wands, this is heavy energy surrounding the sun of earth. The sun of earth could be Virgo, Taurus, Capricorn, if you're looking at horoscopes here, but we've got um, earth, a lot of earth energy and so far fire, right? Now this is, this is, to me, this is already played out or is playing out now, or some of you already know it's going, these are actions with pentacles and fire. These are, these are, actions that are happening here they're tangible you can touch them there's receipts there's receipts for this conflict there's receipts for this failure maybe it's public maybe it's not but this has happened or is happening and it's 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 not just in your head or how you feel you know it's 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 to me i'm gathering quite heavy energy that is actually played out or is playing out now some more fire energy which i love right because you've got all this heavy energy but then again in action with fire, these being action cards, this is this new beginning. It's like there's a lot of um, maybe uh, heavy energy surrounding you or somebody at this time. Um, but this person who has this energy, Sagittarius, if you have this energy, but you're still stabilizing yourself and, and being abundant and doing your thing, it's like, it's like you burst through this wall of fire. Right? 
it's like the explosion and then you burst through it and you get on the other side and you look back and you're like, holy shit, that was, that was tough, right? Because if you poked your head through that hole, you would see where you just came from, which is the conflict that I see being experienced right now. This conflict can be internal or external, right? Um, I see it as being a little bit more external again with all these pentacles and fire energy, these action oriented cards. OK, um, you're the card in the middle, your spread, which is to me the second most powerful energy other than your overall. Wow. The two of air, which is the two of swords, that's needing to make a decision, not making it weighing out if weighing out what to do and what's in your best interest and then maybe feeling a little bit frustrated because you can't come to a conclusion about it so maybe this conflict is a little bit internal and external right but well let's keep going your sixth card out absolutely gorgeous the sun right it the energy totally changes here and it and i and i know that it changes in the in the tangible because this major arcana is here, you know, there's all this, it's some of you, huh. let's go, you have three more cards left for your spread, your nine card spread, and I will show you the, the cards, okay, second card out, second major arcana, uh, seventh card out in your spread, the magician, and I'll show you how it's depicted here, and it's funny because even upright, you can see it shadow side as well, it's like, There is, a, there is a, if you know anything about media, media can be quite elusive and it paints a perception and a picture, which if you know about the magician in reverse, he's so manipulative, right? Because he's very good at painting pictures that might not necessarily be true in order to get what he wants from someone or to get people to move the way he wants and orchestrate things, right? But in Upright, it's like the ability to gain a lot of control and knowledge and manifest certain things into the tangible, into the tangible, right? If you want a house, you're going to get a house. It's like, I think there's a, there's water here. We'll read the magician actually, but I always see the shadow side of this card when I look at it, even upright. There's a superficiality and a manipulation about cert, this card, but we'll, or at least that's what I'm getting right now in this spread in particular. But let's just, um, let's just keep going. The mother of water. Okay. Which is the queen of cups and the daughter of fire, which is the page of wands. Okay. That's a pretty good lay. Let's see guys. All right. So as I was mentioning, um, I think for a lot of my Saggies, they might have been reflecting on certain things that they consider failures. And I think the conflict might be transmuting that into understanding they were lessons and not failures. But I think at in, in the near past, or maybe you just came over that, it's like that was how you were thinking and feeling. It was like, no, this is a failure. You know, um, maybe feeling like you can't fix or can't win right? Because the, the five of, of, of wands could also be competitive energy. Um, but, but to me, it's, it's, it's combative, right? It, it goes too far. So then it becomes destructive. If it's not, if you do not get a lesson out of it, it can be quite destructive, even whether it's internal or external communication, um, conflict. Now, what's funny though, is, is going into, you know, April, because I'm, I'm doing this a little early, but regardless, time is fluid. Going into April, like beginning of, of April, it's like, it's funny because this Ace of Fire, and I feel like this Ace of Fire and this Sun is the same thing. So it's like, what's there to juggle? Maybe it's... Some of my Sagittariuses are the one that have to instigate this. It's not waiting. A lot of my, that's why there's so much um, action. A lot of my Sagittariuses are making a lot of action um, surrounding starting new and getting past this failure, whether it is with somebody pre-existing or not. 
if it's not, it's like maybe you are single, but energetically you're still tied to something you experienced that you considered a write off, not a write off, a, a straight up failure, like a problem, you know, and you can't get past how it happened, how it played out, how it didn't play out. And it's causing this conflict. And maybe it's with your current partner. Can't get over how things, what happened. So now it's creating this conflict. How do we start new? So maybe that's what that equilibrium is. Some of my Sagittariuses are trying to figure out what they already know is this wanting to start new, but not knowing how to do that because of the conflict from the past. Right? Okay, so this is good because it's like, some of my Sagittarius's are perpetuating past failure because you think that's just how things go if you do things a certain, sorry, let me take that back. Mercury's still retrograde, I'm struggling to communicate. That's why I didn't do the readings. But anyways, it's like some of you are perpetuating that because you just think that's how you are. Or this is how I just behave in, uh, in, in, in work situations, or this is just how I behave when I'm put in these situations, regardless of partner, regardless of the nature. It's just like you're, it's reflecting on certain failures or certain broken relationships and maybe realizing that you've perpetuated some of that in what's happening now because I don't know if this failure played out now this could have been what you were reflecting on that actually happened and then now it's perpetuating and it's like it's like wanting happiness but knowing you have to take actions that really believe in it because I don't think for some of my Sagittarius is you know better, but you're not doing better or you're looking at somebody, possibly an earth or air sign. You know, it could be a cancer. I mean, there's there's everything. You know, we have we have um, Virgo Sagittarius in this card here um, with fire and earth. You know, either way, it's. Um, It's knowing better, like knowing that you could, knowing things that, knowing things could have been better or been different. And I think a lot of Sagittarius are reflecting on themselves, saying if I did it differently or if, and I don't know if you always did that or if this person always did that. They might have been very quick to blame or put off the problem or the actions onto other people or you, if this isn't you. And now the actions that are fueling you or them is based off of understanding that it maybe wasn't just, there's accountability I'm seeing being taken. Like I said, a transmuting of bad situation, conflict, quote unquote failures and understanding that those are really lessons and really converting it into power clarity because the sun is also clarity yes it's fifth dimensional happiness but it's usually the fifth dimensional happiness when you see things clearly and feel confident and empowered by what it is you now know and then where you can go with that and how much better life will be right Now, going into May now, ending April, it's like some of you have, I'm getting a lot of messages. Some of you have like, if you're like, maybe you have a mother, if, if you're a man watching, maybe you have like a, 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 a baby mom and a kid and you're trying to manifest the healing of that, whether for reconciliation or just co-parenting purposes. It's like realizing that the way it went down or what was done, maybe you're realizing that 
you do have the power to make it better. Because these people look happy, maybe a little skeptical, but I see um, a masculine energy really taking some accountability and looking at themselves. And what could be prompting that is, you know, a woman and her child. This could also be the action that's taken towards this woman for my, my men watching or the cross, whatever, right? It's very hard not to assume male or female with these cards, the way they're drawn. It's just so intricate, right? Um, anyway, I see straight action being taken. Um, I do see an emotional outpouring, and, and I do believe that when Sagittarius's um, do decide to express their emotions, they do it in true form. They set everything on fire. They pour it out. It's a display. It is almost a production sometimes, depending on how flamboyant the Sagittarius. And when I say that, I mean that with, I know a lot of Sagittariuses. You know, I was raised by Sagittarius. So it's like, I understand that emotions can be hard to um, formulate and tap into depending on the it's not that Sagittarius's aren't sensitive it's hard for Sagittarius's sometimes to relate their sensitivity to other people okay and it's like I think a lot of my Sagittarius's or this person dealing with you is really coming to terms with how to change that how to relate their feelings to yours um, or you to theirs so that there could be a mutual understanding and most important empathy exchange like this feminine energy seems ec ecstatic to be either receiving or giving this emotion right it's really nice um so let's Let's start pulling other decks, though, because I want to get a lot more clarification here. I want to use the Angel Tarot. We haven't used this one in a while. Just because we get new decks, don't mean we forget the old ones. Okay, Spirit, can we get clarification? This beautiful spread for my beautiful Sagittarius is going into April, leaving winter, going into spring. It's so funny with the Fool, which is fire energy or air energy, I think. Yeah, it's air energy. Um, with the Fool, it's so indicative of springtime. It's budding. It's budding. But it just seems like it's not it's funny because in the middle of your spread is air is like the swords energy but that's it everything else is action oriented earth energy you can touch you can feel it's like but there is this juggling and i just think it's balancing out your light and dark so that you can be truly hopeful about your future while not ignoring or neglecting or glazing over the shadow sides of yourself but when you do go to those shadow sides do not th victimize yourself and just say okay that's who i am no it's not there's people a lot worse than you there's people a lot better than you sorry not better uh uh more emotionally available or kind, whatever, like there's no, we're just human men. And I see that maybe there, for some Sagittarius is there is a potential for a new beginning. And maybe some of my Sagittarius are realizing maybe, or will be realizing that they're already assuming possibly the demise or even though they see the potential of how amazing it is. Um, it's negative thoughts. And they're not even that negative. They're just imbalanced. And it might be a little bit off balance to the negative side. That's all. I don't want to read too, in, too much into that. And I hope this is making sense as I try to get these out too. Because it's like, it's the only air energy which governs communications and thought. Like I said, the rest of the energy is action here, action that there's receipts for, right? Not action, not, not, um, emotional. It, it's 
Now there is emotions, but it's again followed by action. You know, or action that results from somebody expressing their feelings more like an outpour. Somebody might have, you might have manifested for someone to express how they feel to you, and that's exactly what's going to happen. You know, that'd be cool. Um, okay. You ready? Summer's coming. Summer's coming, thank God. Me and my dad need the heat. She be sleeping on heaters. She's always done that since a baby, but she's an Argentinian dog. They're from um, Argentina. You know, so they, they like heat. They're used to living outside. They're feral, I think, over there, maybe. Oh, it's the sun. Don't worry, I do too, my baby. All right, Spirit, let's get clarification. Holy shit. The first card to flip over is the Fool. The Angel of Innocence. Like I told you, that innocence of just having to take that leap of faith in and take a leap on of faith knowing that what you're taking a risk on is can only bring good even the cons aren't that bad it's like once you learn the lesson that if there's no real such thing as failure it's understanding it's tactical information that you pull data from or you 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 manage and analyze data with to create new conclusions about life about your experience because trust and believe needing to understand how you feel during your experience is really important, which I realized I've been saying a lot more often to people. Um, either way, this fool coming out as the first card to expose itself out of the angel deck is a big statement. It's like this new beginning is happening regardless. It's how do you want to behave in it? How do you want to look at it? You can look at it. You could be optimistic or you could be pessimistic. You can assume failure and conflict because that's what you're used to. Or you can actually give it room to bloom with all the potential that you see that it has right from the start. So I do see a new beginning that has a lot of potential right from the start. And it's very clear. There's attraction right away. There's, there's a new beginning. Now, mind you, if it is work related, because I said there's all these pentacles, it's, if it's a change... Because that's what it is. It's like it's knowing that you need to accept or knowing that this is going to be good. But change isn't always easy for people. And then then there's that, that starts to explain this too. This equilibrium It's just trying to balance how you think or feel or your lightness and darkness about the situation, your good thoughts, bad thoughts, like balancing them all out so that you get the most data as possible. Because there's. This has like, it's like a data chart, you know, it's like data, getting as much data so that you can truly manifest what you want. If you're not manifesting, it might just because it's like putting in an order. How do I, how do I make that? I don't even really understand what you want. Do you know what I mean? How do I make that happen when you're not even really clear on it? Doesn't sound, you know, it's getting, gaining that clarity. And uh, I think for many Sagittarius's or this person um, that's dealing with you or maybe both, it was tough having to look at some pretty hard shit. There's an ego, a little death of some ego here, which is always really nice, right? All right, Spirit, can we clarify um, this? It's funny. We've got the Son of Earth. There's two people trying to decide if they want to work together again or be together again after experiencing fail failure between each other. I just got that. Oh, sorry, I didn't show you that shit. So this is why I just got that message, because look between them. They're both one of these birds dancing around. One of them's bigger, meaning one of them's a bit more mature. Either way, they both 
get the drill, okay? And they're both trying to figure out, they both have equilibrium about this. If it, is it possible to manifest this new beginning? Now that I have the clarity I do about all of this, is, is this truly going to be make me happy? Is this going to inspire us both to move forward together or apart? Um, this is a, a business relationship as well. This isn't only romantic. This could also be a family re relationship. Maybe that's a mother and a son, literally. You know, you guys have to determine. It's a general message. You have to determine the nature of the relationship. I can only tell you the, what I see generally here. Right? But yeah, that I'm going to I'm going to tell you what it is in traditional just because you can read what it says, right? So you have the 8 of pe uh, 7 of pentacles, the knight of pentacles, the 5 of wands, the ace of wands, the 2 of swords, the sun, the magician, the the queen of cups and the page of wands. Okay? Spirit, could you please clarify this Son of Earth and this Five of Wands? We got the page, the page of Wands. <laughs> it's like some of you have really tried to start over with somebody or overcome something with somebody. <clears throat> some of you have gone on really long journeys with this person. Some of you have been on a journey with this person. Some of you are about to embark on a new journey with a pre-existing person, possibly with this fool twice. It's like both people are willing to start new. The problem is, is they have different ways of going about it. Like this card is depicted completely different. Textbook means the same thing, but these artists had different ways of formulating what the fool meant to them. And that's what I see. I see two people going, wanting a new beginning, but having very different ways of looking at that. Either what that new beginning looks like or how to get it. How to go, to, how to go about it. Okay. Other the, under the fool is the mother of air. Wow, I can't, I can't. I don't even think that's relevant. I know. I think what's relevant is here. Um, I just got a really quick message because I can't deny. I pulled up the fool and the mothers of heirs here. Um, they're very, like, this is for, like, maybe two or three of you. There's a very immature masculine energy playing around with two mature energies, and this masculine energy needs to watch out. And I think he knows it too. Like, I think he knows it can all crash and burn. <laughs> and I think he knows that he can get hurt with by this broken glass. Okay. Um, and I think that's why this masculine energy is coming off so serious. But it's almost like relief and understanding. I, I'm... There, there's a immature energy playing with two grown ass people, grown ass women. There is a mother of air here who's maybe um, self-medicating herself because under it was the grief card and I'm not gonna pick it up because I can't see. I have to pick it up to show you what it looks like. So there, I'm not gonna look at the other one though. I just did shit. <laughs> okay. <coughs> So one of these women is self-medicating. Um, one of these women could be completely, if she's not self-medicating, she's completely, one of the women could be pregnant. There, there's, there's some juggling behavior I see here, but regardless of that, that's just for a small percentage of you going back to the main. It's like, um, like I said, transmuting hard lessons into knowledge, power, and um, action, taking straight action. Maybe some of you um, met somebody new and 
just meeting them initiated all of this thought because maybe you thought, okay, I want to approach this person or I want to initiate something, but something kept stopping you from wanting to do it. And every time it stopped you, you went into thought and it brought up anxieties and past failures and inner conflict and all of this. And it's like, what you're realizing now is, is that you had to purge that up. And maybe now you're looking at this person differently, or maybe you're saying, okay, I can actually take action towards this person right now. Um, because like I said, when you take these hard lessons and, and what we call failures and realize they're not failures, they're truly lessons. It's like you get shit from it. You're able to take action. You're able to move forward. You're a lot more confident. It resonates to people that way instead of this huge insecurity, which will probably like the magician in reverse come across it, it be narcissistic because the kind of heaviness I see, if it's not dealt with properly, you're only going to, that's this person's only you or this person Saggy is only going to create a bigger ego to try to protect what's broken inside. So instead of just doing that, just fix it. So you don't have to be so sketchy around it and it won't keep hurting you because everybody knows what broken glass does when it's like that. You can really do a lot of damage with just a shard of it, right? So it's like needing to clean that up, for all the carnage that might have happened from the conflict. Get yourself out of this dark night of the soul now so that you can take action. And that's what Sag, a lot of fire energy, but Sagittarius is do they, they, when they come in out of the hermit mode, if they're ever going to take a fast action, it's when they come out of hermit mode. Some people come out like this. Some some bears come out of hibernation all slow and some come out hungry, really hungry. So it's like, depending how long in hibernation this, this sad you, which how long, ever long in hibernation you were, um, you know, some of you might be dealing with another fire sign or another Sagittarius who's got a lot of earth in their chart. You guys might have earth in your chart, but just one is more mature because emotionally they're more available. You know, somebody is more emotionally available here and is manifesting somebody to open up to them and wondering if they'll ever get that clarity, which I believe this person is trying. The problem is, is if they were to do that, they would have to face things that even them themselves isn't really sure if they could sleep with or be cool with in their mind. Like, you know, it would unsettle and unrest, but it's like, give this person credit because it looks like that's what they're trying to do too. So it's, 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 it's beautiful energy. Um, you have, uh, out of three cards, two of them are duplicates right off of the hop, which I think is amazing. Um, I think that's so cool. I love seeing that um eight of wands again action communication let's go downloads clarity downloads you gain understanding you gain from your journeys your multiple journeys and experiences and relationships or jobs or whatever it's like it's so easy to allow things to really think this is a failure it's not it's a lesson you gotta break things to know that they're fragile. Anyway. Um, okay, and then Spirit, can I just get the cards uh, clarification on the energies going into May for my beautiful Sagittarius's? I hope that oh, so the cable I showed the cable people the fucked up pole. Now my internet be on point. Ooh, I knew this was going to show up. The car, because I said carnage. A lot of this conflict is the ego struggling to strip it. And if you say this is your partner, the person, if you say this is somebody else right away, that's the first thing you thought. If the first thing you thought was somebody else right away, this is the ego that needs to be attacked in you. Because anytime you see that, this is a battle like you a lot of people are so concerned with other people's battles with their demons well you gotta do that you gotta do that man 
if there's anything that allows me to help and resonate with you people, it's the battle I do solo and then come and, you know, allow myself to communicate because I'm open from that place. I'm open. I'd be doing it myself. So, of course, I can. Why not? While I'm at it, you want you want messages about this battle? Let's do this. A lot of people have seen light and dark orbs and shapes and entities. You have to understand that's not those are around all of us. OK, they're around all of us. I'm just talking about them, making them I'm bringing them to light. People get very scared and freaked out about that. But guys, you need to know that there's light and dark, not just in everyone and everything, but in you too. Me, I don't play like I'm just light. Yes, of course, I'm a light worker. But what makes me such a fierce light worker is the understanding of my shadow side and how I've controlled my inner beast or continue to learn how to control it so that it doesn't continue to cause carnage because this connection to this entity will cause you to create different carnage in your life. A series of bad decisions, or when I say bad decisions, decisions that went outside of what you really wanted to do or what you really thought was right. But your ego made you made decisions or, you know, the low, the lower frequency vibrational part of yourself made you make those decisions. So you've watched carnage that you've created and this relationship has created before. And then it becomes polarizing. But that's what that energy, that's what the devil wanted to do in the first place. Polarize you to him, chain you. Absolutely not. The minute you convert that lesson that carnage into a, a viable lesson that you can then gain knowledge and power because knowledge is power from, then you've just cut one of those chains. Okay. There's a bit of some of my saggies are beating up on themselves. Some of the, some of my saggies, you know, um, have somebody doing this because of the actions that they took towards you that weren't just, that weren't fair, that were nasty, you know. But then it just brightens right up. It really does. For a family dynamic, because I do see a family dynamic and I do see possibly if this is a family dynamic, somebody is pregnant expecting possibly a child. I think the mother and this the, the 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 grandmother possibly is really excited. I feel like this baby belongs to the son of earth, you know, the daughter of earth. This could be the sister. There's a family dynamic that's gone through a lot of carnage and the birth of a new child is really going to bring light into this family dynamic. Like if your sister or brother is having a kid and you're going through a lot of like family problems, you know, like relatives, like family, immediate family problems, this child, even though I think there might be a lot of conflict about all the problems this kid might make or um, or there's just pre-existing issues and it's just like this, this baby brings light, but that's what they do because they're angels. They're the closest thing to angels on earth. Before they give up their wings, because we teach them to. Hmm. Okay. Let's see what the romance angel cards have for my beautiful Sagitt. Oh, do you see that? It's beautiful. Ah. Okay. So first off, there's a strong magnetic connection here, okay? This magnetic connection is this card standing up. It looks like there's a magnet. Like it just, it fell, there's like a crack because like this table has wings on it. I can take them off and make it round and it fell right in the crack and stood there. I'm not even gonna tell you what it is yet. It's a secret! <laughs> anyway, so it just, it's this chemistry. There's this connection. Right. There's so many ways I could play this out, but there is this connection that is coming in that was once was, you know, and it's genuine. And when I say that, it's like, look, they're both seeking knowledge together. That's what that light in the middle of they're both seeking knowledge, both open to understanding together and they spend their time hoarding each other. That's what it looks like together, gaining knowledge about each other to gain this knowledge about this relationship, which is the single but a, you know. It also looks like a phone, like they're just chilling on the phone. <laughs> anyway. Um, so 
the wedding card. This situation involves marriage. Some of you are in a marriage, right? And want that new beginning, you know. Some of you might get it with a child. Um, some of you, you know, all it really is is really a, a significant level of commitment, right? You know, committing to a new beginning, committing to letting the past be the past and truly meaning it. Because for some of my Sagis that are in a relationship, a dance, a song and a dance with somebody, there was this promise before of a new beginning, but nobody ever felt it. And it's like, it's finally being felt. It's coming up, it's setting ablaze because there was the proper logic and action taken to manifest. And it's like, I talk about it, guys, needing to get all four corners of you balanced, right? So that you can really step in to that divine energy so that you can truly manifest. Not to say that you can't manifest shit at any stage. It's just like the control, like there's levels to this manifestation shit. Or like there's levels to it. I felt bad saying shit because it's like the farthest thing from shit. Like not that I don't, I do swear. It's just like certain things I don't ref like referring to in that way. You know, it's just like, there's nothing shit about the magician and his divine connection, his or her divine connection to God and everything he gains out of that experience, right? All right, and then, um, can I just get clear? I just want a card for this Ace of Fire and this, this Fool. Okay. I believe this deception card is referring to the, the fake mask and all the fake mask and deception and all the carnage and failure that was a result of it. And what's funny is, is if you look closely, the person that's down, <coughs> sitting down, <coughs> is wearing a mask too. Okay. Both people are. And it's, it's, um, I see the stripping of an ego. And it really, it changes some stuff. Maybe it's even just as simple as like manifesting a conversation to talk about past conflicts and stuff like that. Maybe it never really went over. It's like this plane crashed and nobody ever discussed who was on the plane, where it came from. It's just like it crashed. And it was unaccessible and people were just like, no. like imagine, but people do that in relationships, you know, if it's business, that's even more serious. It's like, you know, maybe there are a lot of emotions there between a business partner and you or somebody that you worked with in some capacity, but it's like the conflict and the money that was lost, um, working with them is not worth it. And you need to find a way to express that. Some of you want to start over in business alone. And what the two of air is, is the struggle is, is you already know you want to move over, move on. Like it's dead. It's gone. That plane crashed. But it's like there's emotions there. There's maybe, you know, they say um, don't do business with your friends or family. It's this maybe possibly being a situation with this too and wanting to start on your own. Okay. Now, for some of you, this failure and this conflict, like I said, is an X. And you have to look at what you experienced with that ex. You, you think you released them or they think they released you or whatever, you know, fit it how it fits. But just because you're not attached to someone doesn't mean you release them. Because at the bottom of this card, it says the time has come to clear your energy. Because that's really what releasing an ex looks like is clearing that energy and what that how, uh, the best way to clear that energy is one of two ways or both is tapping into how you felt about that resolving those feelings and moving on because there might have been feelings that you suppressed because you just weren't able to deal with them at that time or it could be the failures okay and turning those from failures into lessons and really taking those lessons home and then releasing that and not victimizing yourself or demonizing somebody else 
just accepting it for what it was. Not all lessons are fun. It's like if you went to school and in high school, you had, you know, eight courses. I'm sure not all of them were your favorite. I mean, I can, I, I, I drop out very early, but anyways, that maybe that's not the best example, but anyways, you guys know I use metaphors and or at least try to all the time. So that's a clearing your energy thing. And I really believe that's that, that, that failure mentality. It's like, you didn't fail. You had an experience with somebody. Don't throw yourself up on the cross. You know what I mean? Absolutely not. It's like, take it for what it was. Cause if that allows you to now move forward after, so you now manifest somebody you know, who is more mature, who's able to actually move forward with you. It's like, now you won't demonize that because you, you learned all those lessons. So why demonize it now? Understand it, what it is, even before you manifest its replacement or the, the, the level up or, you know, something better. Like I said, with regards to business, a lot of you are just deciding to move. You want to start alone and new and you're, the only thing holding you back is the emotional connection you have to this person, maybe not wanting to, feeling like you're abandoning them, or maybe they're manipulating you to stay and you're uncomfortable with it, but it's working because you've known this person for so long or whatever the case is, but it's like the facts are the facts. Don't be fake, you know, don't be fake to yourself or them, All right? Anyways, guys, that's your reading. Um... I love you guys. Thank you for all your support. Please don't forget to like, share, subscribe. And if you want a personal reading, you can email me at queencuptarot at gmail.com. And I hope all of you are good and staying safe and staying prayed up and, and letting your inner angels live. Okay. So until next time, love you. Bye.